Leighton High Road, the week before Christmas. So I just popped uh, down to uh, see Jake Green, the brilliant photographer Jake Green, to pick up a copy of uh, the expanded edition of his Pi and Mash book, which I wrote an essay for. Uh, he's a great guy, Jake. And uh, I'll just pop a little bit of video in here of me picking up the book, some shots of the book. This is, this is Jake Green's amazing book, Pie and Mash. And these are all the surviving Pie and Mash shops in London. Is that right, Jake? Yeah. At the beginning, look, it's got a little introduction by the gentle author, Spitfield's Life. It's got something from the wonderful Pie and Mash Club, Lunch with the Club. And at the back, it's got something by some geezer called John Rogers, called the Dead Pie Shop Trail, which is a walk I did, which is a, a trail I created between some of the closed pie and mash shops. It's a wonderful book. And where can people buy a copy of this book, Jake? Well, it's for sale. The cheapest place to get it from is noted Eden Pie House in Leightonstone. So that exhibition's gone permanent now, John. Brilliant. Um, and the book's available there, primarily, and then you can buy it online, shop.jakegreen.co.uk. I'll put a link below, because, or maybe I'll put a, a link up here. That link will be in here. And that's wonderful. And I've just I've got a copy. That's fantastic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go out for a walk now from Jake's studio. It's a good place to launch a walk from, I reckon. I reckon. I'll just drop in a few images and a little bit of footage that I shot on that day when I did the Dead Pie Shop Trail in February 2017. It's just a little sample of some of the uh, the places that I passed on that day. So I'm doing a walk today uh, between some the sites of some closed pie mash shops. I'm writing a piece for um, the publication of photographs of the existing pie and mash shops, but I'm writing about the ones, or some of the ones that have disappeared. The list of ones that have disappeared obviously is much longer than the ones that are still here. This is the view from inside Stratford Park. You can just see this little row of three little houses there. They're quite cute ornate windows above. Fireworks and a beauty salon on either side. This is the menu. And there you can see the remains of the old building just poking through between these shop fronts. There's a beauty salon next door. So I'm just heading from the first one I've been to on West Ham Lane. I'm now heading across to Roman Road. So I think Tyson's there, it's on the site of Kelly's Pie and Mash, 600 Roman Road, Tony's hairstylist next door. Look, hardly a light on in these apartment blocks here at Dalston Lane. Indicative of how empty they are, or underused. It's a real tragedy, isn't it? So, I haven't got long. I've got to be, uh, got to be home in a, less than two hours. I'm down in Leighton in the wonderful Coronation Gardens. I love it here. So, about an hour and a half to do a walk. The great Orient legend, Laurie Cunningham. One of the greatest ever British footballers, you could say. And the uh, buried river Philly Brook, the Philly Brook, runs beneath the ground along one side of Coronation Gardens. It's got a wonderful old map in um, WH Weston's The Story of Leighton and Leightonstone, published 1921. And he shows um, the the banks of the River Lee at the time 
of the, uh, the the end, I think, of the, either the last ice age or the second ice age. I can't remember my ice ages. And all of this, Leighton High Road, all of this right up to Francis Road would have been underwater, would have been under the waters of the River Lee. Quite a sobering thought. Also, all of the Olympic Park as well would have been underwater. It's fascinating, isn't it? It's one of my favourite shops in the entire world. It's featured in probably at least two other videos I've made. But I love it so much. Carnival cards, they sell everything in there. They, they did this thing with the shop fronts in Leighton for the Olympics. Can you see what they've done there? Made them look a little bit more kind of artsy and villagey. I'll put a link below to the slightly more comprehensive Leighton video I made a few years ago. This is the majestic old town hall. Now sporting a majestic pub there at the front, the Leighton Technical. What a beautiful building, eh? See, there's a really kind of beautiful ballroom up there. I went in there once actually, it's really fantastic. Ruckholt Road, a reference to the old manor of Ruckholtz, which was a significant holding in the area. It's also the location of a Roman villa as well. This isn't intended to be a comprehensive video about Leighton High Road. Like I said, there is a, a video on my, um, on my channel that I made about three years ago. It's a little bit more detail. I'm trying to get sort of on towards, I think I'm going to head for Water Lane, Maryland. That'd be nice today, I think. That's sort of feasible within the amount of time that I've got. Or perhaps, actually, I'll go off on a tangent. Who knows? But I want to get, or get through Leighton, really, because I've covered this quite a lot in the past. Of course, as I'm sure you know, this is not the land of Asda and TK Maxx. This is the land of Tostig, brother of King Harold. And ultimately, I think it was Tostig that ended up uh, fighting against Harold, betraying him. But King Harold, the last Saxon king of England, spent time in Leighton. Very significant area, Leighton. Templar lands were here. Romans uh, occupied Leighton. There's a Bronze Age village in Leighton. It's a place of enormous antiquity. Got these nice little uh, heritage plaques here along this section of the high road on the bridge near the tube station. And the Doomsday Book Leighton is entered as Lane Ton, which is at the time had a population numbered at 43. By 1920, the population of Leighton was about 120,000. Curious anomaly is that Leighton Tube Station is actually in the E11 postcode, which is the postcode associated with uh, Leighton Stone and Wanstead. So you could say that Leighton Station isn't actually in Leighton, although that would be a little bit of a radical statement. Another one of the little heritage plaques here, talking about the gunpowder production at Temple Mills, led to a tragedy in 1690 when Peter Payne, a Huguenot refugee, was blown up together with two of the mills, three stone houses and a lot of gunpowder. Another one of those little plaques mentions how Leighton High Road once formed part of the pilgrimage route to Waltham Abbey. Waltham Abbey, of course, being heavily associated also with King Harold and Tostig. The King Harold Pub, which of course recently changed its name to the Leighton Star. Which, uh, which is a shame really, because that was a kind of like a, a very obvious landmark that linked the area to its um, associations with King Harold. And I don't think you see King Harold's name mentioned anywhere else as far as I'm aware. Olympic Coffee. So of course this was one of the entrances to the Olympic Park during the London Olympics. People were sort of encouraged to kind of enter the Olympic Park via Ruckholt Road. 
which is interesting. It's the way I entered the Olympic Park during the Olympics. That place has seen better days, hasn't it? Over the road, you got High Road Leighton, and you got High Road E15. I, I do have a slightly unhealthy interest in, in postcodes, but of course, this is still Waltham Forest. You can see it there, Waltham Forest. Waltham Forest E15. E15 being the postcode associated with Stratford, so clearly a part of, of Leighton and Leightonstone is in the E15 postcode. Very interesting. If you're interested in that kind of thing. Temple Mills Lane. That being a reference to the Templar Mills that were here. The Templar land in Leighton. E15. Forest. And down there you can see where the terrain starts to change on the edge of the Olympic development. This here is the frontier of old and new London. I think what I'm going to do actually is just walk around the edge of the uh, Olympic development so you can see the contrast and maybe then go down to uh, Stratford Broadway, the old Stratford. But you can see behind me these places like this, this old cash and carry place. I mean, they really are living on borrowed time. I think they are going to get sucked up into the Olympic development. I wonder what those, what those pigeons up there will make of it all. So here we see the two Londons side by side. This old remnant of the old industrial fringe of London between Leighton and Stratford and behind it there you can see all the new development sucking up all this land. This is a walk that I've been doing in various forms ever since I moved to the area in 2006 when none of this was built around me behind me here when all of that was all boarded off ready for the Olympic development. And it's been interesting to see it change over that this sort of 12 year period and it's going to continue to change as well. I think apparently it's going to go on for about another 10 to 20 years. Shobham Road, London Borough of Newham. The gaping mouth of mega city Stratford there. see the other side of the road is a very different picture. Two worlds sit side by side. Yet more cranes, more building, more development. Seems never ending, doesn't it? I suppose it's fairly easy to, to look at these industrial states behind me here and not really uh, lament their passing because they're not particularly appealing to look at necessarily, but they really did represent the kind of lifeblood of this area for many, many years. And once it's been swept away and replaced with the tower blocks, that part of the uh, story of the area will be, will be gone, you know, it will just live in the memory. It's a really good progress with my book lately. It's getting close to the end now, I can see the end in sight and I've been working on it for over the last five years and sometimes I wonder about that but one of the reasons is, is you know, I'm walking through here now and I've already written about all of this. I feel like I have to update it and change it because it's a constantly changing landscape, it's a moving target. But I feel this is an important moment in the time of London to document and that's why I've kept at it with the book and kept working on it and kept adding to it. 
I don't have a publisher as yet, so if there are any publishers out there, I'd love to speak to you. Tavern, an old boozer which has managed to navigate the new terrain and find a place. Windmill Lane, a name that I'm guessing is very literal that there would have once been a windmill here. Angel Lane here is a very old, old, old lane leading down between Leighton and Stratford. It goes back to some of the earliest maps of the area. I feel that Angel Lane is a real dividing point between the old and new Stratford. And now we come down off that bridge, down to the edge of Stratford Centre here. The wonderful old Theatre Royal Stratford East over there. theatre maker Joan Littlewood, one of the real significant figures of this part of London. Sometimes I find this all a bit difficult to take in, to absorb the scale of it, and the fact that it's constantly evolving, they're constantly adding to it, constantly building more. It's like an assault on your senses and your very idea of what a place is. This feels like an apt place to end this little walk, this micro-adventure, this little tour of the changing face of London, post-Olympic London. I've also got to go and meet my son right now, so I'm going to jump on the tube and scoot back to Leightonstone. Obviously there's far more we can look at here. May you have a, a wonderful mid-winter feasting season, whatever it is that you celebrate, however you celebrate it, if you celebrate anything, have a great one. I'll see you soon.